Welcome to JD and the Duffel Bag podcast, right? Um, this is a special one. I would say, in fact, I'm going to introduce it by saying this. It's 2020. So in the next 10 years, I'm going to have a list of bittersweet moments. Yeah, my top 10 bittersweet moments. And I think this is definitely going to be one of them. I'm in um, the Liverpool football ground and I'm here with one of the most important managers and maybe the best manager. Oh, it's hard to say it right now. But I'm, here, I'm with Jurgen Klopp. How are you doing? I'm good. But what is the bitter part of uh, this memory? You are a supporter of which club? Oh, Manchester United. It's hard. It's hard for you me. Had, you had 30 good years and you have like three or four not so good. And that's wow. I know. Do you know, we're so, like, we're so spoiled. And I feel like it's got to that point in my life of having to overstand that. You know what? Sometimes it's just not always going to be your turn. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah, I know. I know. And most of the time my life was like that. So Yeah, exactly. Obviously, when people say, how are you? Usually the response is, yeah, I'm just fine and stuff like that. But like, you've had some phenomenal things that have happened over the last couple of years. And more so this year. Um, this season, like, how actually are you? <laughs> Still, I'm good. So, it really, you can't imagine how how little it changed you mm. if you have things like this. So, I never accepted that things that didn't work out had a massive impact on my life. Like, uh, you know, that I was before that this season, I was uh, on one of the record holders in losing finals. So, mm. on one side, it's nice to reach a final. On the other side, it's not so nice to lose it. But... Um, it's the only way to find out um, if you're good enough this year or not, if you go to the final. So um, I was always a happy person. So not immediately after the game and more, maybe not for the next three, four, five hours, but after that was okay. So I was fine then and I'm fine now. Now, yeah. Um, I don't feel um, that I can fly or something like this. It's mm. just an intense period of the season. I can kind of actually just thinking about it now, I can kind of, I could tell from the outside looking in that you're all right because you're like the greys ain't been kicking in too much yet there's a couple of greys coming in the bid but usually like when you become a manager you start seeing like you see like all the pictures from some of the managers where they start like it's all brown and neat and blonde or whatever it is yours is still you know what I mean? You still got, there's no grace coming in. So you seem like things are oh, going no, around no, for you. No, no, getting less on the head, getting more on the back. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's how, how it is actually. That's so completely normal. So all, all, all fine. Yeah. No, it's uh, how I said it. it's the job is intense anyway. Um, and maybe if I was never, had never a season like, like this season in my life. So mm. the only thing I can say, if I, in the past, I probably would have thought about it. That's really cool. It must feel exceptional. But mm -hmm. it feels like the others because nothing is decided yet. Nothing is done yet. People constantly tell you it's already decided, but it's obviously not. It only looks really good, stuff like that. So preparing the next game, that's my life. Mm. That's my life. It's not about enjoying the moment and these kind of things. But there will be a moment, hopefully, <laughs> when we have to celebrate something, whatever it will be, whatever it will be. And then we will do it, not before. Would you say a part of your life is actually like really managing expectations as well because it surely it could be easy now for how things are going for you um in, in your career and as the football club as well where it's going that like it could be just easy to celebrate very early before things nobody, have happened. nobody would do that we are not i wouldn't be i wouldn't have the job i i have mm. um if i would be the guy who celebrates the first party <laughs> the first possible party so that's how it you is. you wouldn't but no. do you not other people people can do whatever they want if, if mm. they wouldn't celebrate this season that would be really crazy they don't have to celebrate only one day after it's decided why should that be we are that's how it is we have to entertain the people and a lot of times people are disappointed with what we are doing and stuff like this yeah. so now they're obviously fine and happy with what we are doing so they should have it should, it should carry them through the week. So win at the weekend, have two, three brilliant days in the office, wherever you work, stuff like that. And then playing on Wednesday again, win it, go again. They can fly. That's that's absolutely okay. It's just not it's just not for us. But mm. dealing with expectations always, I think it's it's not only in football like this, it's in life like this. So your parents have already expectations. They want you good looking, smart, non not smoking, not drinking, all that stuff. So you we are we, we are used to fail yeah. a lot as human beings. So no problem with that. And I have my own expectations. I try to um, reach them, fulfill them, whatever. 
but I cannot um, mm. fulfill the expectation of the whole world. I never tried, to be honest. But it's clear, we have the same idea. We all want to win as much as possible. And that's what we try to of do. Of course. You seem to have like a great mentality um, installed here at the moment. And, you know, even the stats as a football club back that up. And a lot of that does come down to you. How does like a great leader sort of enhance that mentality into you know your your players I, I i guess it starts with the club so we uh liverpool you will do, probably don't like to hear that <laughs> no that's fine yeah but we are i respect but you we as are a, yeah, but we are liverpool yeah, yeah, yeah. so that means we have to be successful so that's what everybody expects easier said so you, you sign the contract here and it's clear whatever happened so far you have to it's good that's why you sign here but from now on we expect more now you have to deliver constantly blah 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 all that stuff so that's the first thing i don't have to convince any player and tell them by the way don't forget you are at liverpool and we have to do more and never do that but the, the well, how i understand it and I'm, I'm christian and means and my my the, the, and I'm sorry i'm not too, my english is not too good to explain exactly but but my, my favorite part in the bible is pretty much treat other people like you want to be treated mm -hmm. by yourself so uh, and it helps obviously so it's just a problem always that you don't know exactly if you have big expectations there's a lot of pressure and stuff like this. how do you deal with the people in this case with the players and i trust them i have a lot of i put a lot of faith in them and all that stuff and it, it's easy because they're wonderful human beings sensationally skilled boys and stuff like this so now we have to make sure that we all do the same in the same moment and, mm -hmm. and in the right direction all this kind of stuff and it's football it's a game so it's not that serious actually it's just a game there are more important things in life so try to stay cheeky a little bit so try and, and have enjoy it if you if possible at least during the week enjoy the game even but after that start preparing the next one that you can make sure that you will enjoy it again so that's how it is it's not that complicated show respect and then you get respect yeah. that's what we do with all the people we, we meet and all that stuff be humble because why you shouldn't be humble yeah for what reason in the world you should feel like something special the boys have a special life you know in all parts actually yes they earn a lot of money but they cannot go out without anybody's watching them for example whatever any every other person in the world can do mm -hmm. all the people that can do this think yeah that's not so difficult to not doing it like if you kind of go out and everybody makes pictures and stuff like that but try it once yeah go out and everybody is looking at you that makes your life completely different so it's a different life they have to deliver every week the whole world is watching them in that moment and they're still very young what they need is faith and trust they have to realize it's possible to make the biggest mistakes ever in public and life goes on. Yeah. If you have the right people around you and that's exactly what we try. Faith and trust. It's interesting that you mentioned that because, you know, I've been to a lot of football games and I've been to games where, you know, the stadium's packed and there's like, it's an amazing time. And I've been when the stadium is packed and it's not a good time. And like, I look at all of these people and I look at the manager and I think you ha must have to have a... A, a certain level of self-belief and self-confidence that is so through the roof. Talk to me a little bit about that. Like there has to be a level of mental conditioning that you have to have to do a job like this. I was never the smartest boy in my class. I was not the lowest on the, on the, uh, in, the in the schedule or in the, in the, in the table or whatever. So I was complete average. So yes, mm. a little bit over average. Um, above average smart so that's how it was and i was still a very happy person mm. so i never in my life struggled with confidence to be 100 honest I, and it's not that i had um always confidence just i didn't think about it i did the things i don't expect they always work out that's how you go through life yeah. if it works out brilliant if not change direction use another way but whatever or forget it it's always like this i don't expect that i'm perfect that leaves me pretty in a pretty good condition i would say so yeah. but to be in the job i'm in i don't think it's possible to go there in overnight so if i would have started not at mines if i would have started with my footballing career at liverpool with ex with all the things around i had no would have had no clue how to deal with it mm. so and i never thought one day during my career if it's prepares me for the Liverpool time. I had no clue what will happen. So I just tried to come through the next day and the next day and try to develop myself, the boys. And so when I came here, I was ready. 
I was ready to deal with the situation here without knowing that my whole life so far prepared me for that job. Mm -hmm. So whatever it was, I have no idea. It's just do the thing you do with 100% respect that you can fail. That doesn't mean you're a bad person, you're silly or dumb, whatever. It doesn't mean anything. It just it, There are different circumstances why things cannot work out. And you just have to then adjust a little bit the the the, the effort or the, the the way you you you've chosen and stuff like this. That's all. And then yeah. you go again. And that's what I do in football. The main thing what you learn in football is dealing with failure. Mm. You cannot play the perfect game. It's just not possible because so many other things influence the game. It's the weather. It's the wind. People don't like it, but it is. The ball is rolling. It's pretty distant. Big distance between your head where all the decisions are made and your feet so that can happen a lot of things all these things you deal with failure and you stay confident that's what i learned yeah. pretty early how easy is it for you to like see the traits in some of your players knowing whether they are, will end up being good coaches or even going on to be great coaches i've seen a lot of my players the the, the opportunity to do it but it's i'm not sure if they want to do it yeah so that's that's just how it is it's how i came in a job and how my career um, went so far I, w I could recommend it <laughs> because really it's really nice but you see all the other careers out there and they are not worse they're not worse coaches or whatever they were just they were not that lucky choosing the club choosing the owners choosing the ceos and uh, we cannot influence these things and if you are the right the best manager in the world in the wrong club mm. It can kill careers. That's how it is. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I would recommend a job, but um, my job I could easily recommend because I was really lucky. Was you? Did you always have the ability to be able to like communicate with special players? Because you was a, obviously a player yourself and ended up, you know, doing your coaching while you was playing as well. Did you always have that like ability to be able to speak to? Yeah, I was as a player already like this. I was a very average player, obviously. Mm. I was not really good, and but I played still all the time in my in my championship team at, at Mainz, where I played. And um, for different reasons, obviously, uh, every coach, every manager thought I'm an important part of the team. So then that's why that's true. But that's why I played. So I was kind of the engine of the of the team. Something went wrong. I told everybody. Mm. So something's going wrong, and maybe if, if possible, I told them how we can do better or we have to do more. Probably that was what I said most of the time. Again, I had that role even as a player. I was then an experienced player, 33. Um, a lot of players asked me for advice, more about life. I was a young father, so I had the problems they had now 12 years before. When I was 20, 21, I learned already how, it, how life changed when you become a father and all these things. Yes. So that's what prepared myself to be that kind of experienced player in a team. Yeah. And from the experienced person in a team to make the next step to be the coach or manager, I felt it felt really natural for me because it was overnight, obviously. Sunday I played, Monday I was the manager. so And um, I never thought it would happen, but it's again, I was really uh, well prepared for it and I have no clue how that happened. Yeah, imagine that, like literally going from just being the player and then coaching and then just almost like straight away just being a manager of that club. It's That's crazy, yeah. yeah. So they had, a, they, yeah. Uh, they had to remind me that I have to leave the dressing room of the players. <laughs> because it was that the, obviously coach, manager had a different dressing room. And the first day I came in and sat on my, on my spot where I was sitting for 11 years. And yeah. I said, no, no, manager is sitting right over there. So I went in there, I was alone in that room. I thought, oh, what, what am I doing now? Yeah. So yes, I, I learned it. I'm self-educated as a as a I, manager. I fully you hear that. <laughs> You're known as well for like being a proper like a um, like a player friendly type coach. What does that even mean, really? And have you ever played under managers that were not necessarily player friendly? Yeah, of course. Who it was. It was good old fashioned. It wasn't that. It was not allowed to have kind of a a, a proper relationship. It's a little bit of the, was of course the time when where when we were educated. So how we were educated? My father was educated in the fifties, if you want, forties, fifties. So yeah. army in all countries had a big influence. So it was like this: the, the 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 general of the team pretty much was the coach, and that's how how he behaved: left, right, left, right, and the boys had to go left, right, or left, right. Yeah. So um, then we were educated in, in a different 
period of time, but it's still a little bit like this. And I always understood it like this. You can only be close to your players if you are ready to answer the questions. Okay. The closer you come, the more questions they ask. If you are not ready to answer these questions, then keep them on. Keep distance. That's really important. And I, for me, I never could do it. Imagine I was a player on Sunday, was their, their manager on Monday. If I would have told them, gentlemen, from now on, please, Mr. Klopp instead of Kloppo. So kind of these things. It's not possible. So I, I just had no other chance and never thought about it to do it differently. Yeah. The first five, six, seven years, I, I, there were still players I played together with were my players at Mainz. And then I came to, to Dortmund and it was already exactly like that. I don't believe really in artificial hierarchy, hierarchies. Is, do, you, do you have that word? So like I'm hierarchies. here. Hierarchies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like it's not natural. It's yeah, like you, yeah. you, you say that's how like this and that's like this. It develops. I have no problem. They, they, I'm, I'm the boss. I say who plays. I say when we train. I say what we do in training. I, say, I decide all these things. So, But in between these decisions, I can be... They're friend. I always explain it like this. I'm the, my friend of my players, but I'm not their best friend. I'm not yes. the guy who understands everything what they are doing. I try to understand it, but still don't understand it sometimes. And um, they will not know that after that. Do you find, is it important to have like shared interests, yeah, with your players amongst other things other than just a win in a game? Yeah. No, she had interest. Of course, their life, my life, they all, we all need to know about. We work, it's pretty much, apart from sleeping, I think the whole day, and probably even when I'm sleeping, I think about these boys. So that's how it is. I don't want to, it just happens. So because there's so many informations you get. So for me, it's important that the player is in his best shape in the moment when it counts. So, and we try everything to do that with nutritioning, with training, with treatment, with lineups, with training, really tactical training, physical, all this. I we try everything, but then there's a time when they go home and there's still a, there's still a situation. Yeah. So wife, no wife, girlfriend, kids, whatever, wife and girlfriend, kids, <laughs> all that stuff. It's all possible. All these things happen out. That's normal life, but they all influence the performance. But I'm don't. It's not for me. Not that I talk to them. That I pretend I'm interested. I am interested. Yeah. I am interested. So, and they know pretty much all about me. They know my wife. They know my sons. They know. But if they have a question, I can tell them whatever they want about yeah. me. But it's important to know who you are working with, and it's important to know uh, why somebody is determined, why somebody is motivated, why it happens. So where are you coming from? Are you coming from Brazil, Argentina, wherever? Growing up in a house without windows, stuff like this. Are you out there to earn money? Which is fine. Yeah, of course. Or are you here to make your family proud? Or are you here to make a whole country proud? Whatever. There are so many different things. How is your situation? What's your situation when you grew up? So these are all the things you need. I think I need to know. And I know them. Yeah. So, um, and that's what make, creates a relationship. The relationship is still then not... They can talk to me. And it was always important to me. I told it all the players... We win a game 4 nil. The next day you come in to me and want to have a private conversation. We will have that. We lose a game 4 nil, and you come in the next day and we'll have a private conversation. And the conversation will be exactly the same because this relationship is independent to results. Mm. So that's important. Of course, you should not, we should not lose 5, 10 times 4 nil in a row. Then you have to talk to somebody else because then I'm not there anymore. But um, that was always like this. There's a private basis and there's a professional basis. And um, the better these two work together, the better it is. I think as well, like what you're saying about the why, even in like in anyone that's doing something creative, that's just really important. Like, like what you're saying, like f trying to find out from somebody what motivates them. Like, why are you, mo why are you doing this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, can I just talk to you quickly about honesty? Because obviously you got like a broad spectrum of players in your in your dressing room, just like anyone, you know. And like with that, you're dealing with people who react differently to ha information. So like I could imagine that sometimes you can get the, be the best out of players when you are maybe shouting at them or aggressive with them. And then you might have some that are maybe a little bit more delicate that you might have to, you know, talk to. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with um, the honesty factor in, in your managerial role? I'm always 100% honest. I don't tell always the truth, but that's different. That means that I, I don't speak then. 
it's not like going, a, a player's not in a very good shape and I tell him, come in, and I tell him, you realize you're not in a really good shape. That makes no sense. So that's, I would say then the truth and I know it, but mm. if I, he would ask me, I would be 100% honest, but I don't go into that. So it's just, no, it's about when. It's, yeah. it's, it's about when you say what. Um, but how is that? I never, never lied to a player. That's, that doesn't work. So the thing is, so if I say you get a chance if you do this and that, you have a chance if you do this and that. That's easy as that. I have, but I have to remind myself it's not. These are the moments when you can lose a player, and you can lose a team if you mm -hmm. say something and you don't stick to it. So then it's really possible that you lose the whole dressing room. That never happened to me because I usually because I do that. Don't do that. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, shouting at the team, of course, of course. But shouting at the player, yes. Does it help? So I try, I try to not do doing things which make me feel better. So it's something shouting makes yourself feel better. It's like, I have to tell them what is wrong. Right. Go in, shout, and you realize, okay, now they all know that you are not happy with what they did, but where's the information? Yes. So where is the information? <laughs> yeah, so, it's true. But it still happens. We are all human beings, and if somebody pushes the alarm, button then things like yeah the shouting happen. can easily can. the message can get lost in the noise oh yes of course of course so it's really rare so like people think i think against southampton for example we played the first half it was nil nil Southampton was really good i was not surprised by that and we were some somehow then second half were much better and then people come in, what did you say them in half time you know in, in your mind you would imagine going are you crazy yeah <laughs> look on your badge we are liverpool play football like this our stadium all that kind of stuff but what well, would be possible we showed three situations where we didn't see how much space we have to play if we use that in the second half the game will be different yeah so that's how it is it's no reason if there is but i shouted at them as well already that for for some reason but i can't remember anymore it's but it's just to in my job is doing the right thing in the right moment and I try to do that as often as possible and sometimes it works out and sometimes not. So sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, that's yeah. how it is. The differences between, you know, working in your homeland and coming over here and stuff, how did you transition from, from that? What was that like for you? Very intense. Very intense. So not speaking the, the language perfectly which you have to use the whole day yeah. makes life for me, who speaks a lot, um, quite challenging. That's true. Then you, you do, you're doing a very good job of it. Because uh, I always think, I right, if take send me to Germany, mate, and I would have a clue. But in Germany, everybody speaks English, so you would. So you're would, right. would, Yeah, you would be <laughs> completely all right. You go to Berlin. I think English. There are more people speak English than German. Oh, I'm pretty sure. So that's all fine. This is with German completely different. If I go somewhere and speak German, everybody looks at me. That's true. So, so yeah. So. Um, the job is different. It was a head coach in Germany and the manager here. The email culture is massive in the English football club. Email culture, really? Everybody writes an email about everything. And when you are new, <laughs> yeah. when you are new, you read all of them in a language you don't get one hundred percent. Yeah, my days were not long enough to be honest. So it was a really intense time. Meanwhile, I know which emails are only. Psh, yeah. Yeah, don't even have a look and you That's can... interesting. I would have thought that like emails would have still been a big thing where you was like from your homeland anyway. Like every everyone emails these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the, the club the club um, structure is different in England and Germany. Mm. So in, in Germany I'm not involved in that many things. So commercial stuff and all things, nothing to do. So, um just uh, they inform me more or less instead of um um, asking me about different things. I For me, it was slightly different because I was at Dortmund and Mainz where I was involved, but usually as a head coach, you are not that much involved. In it. And here you are involved in everything. You come in, you are the new manager, means everybody. You, I could ex decide, when you come in in a, in, a, in a football club, you could decide the color of the pants. They would change everything. From now on, Seriously? we only use red pants. And I would, oh, good idea. Mm. So, whoop. all the green pants, whatever color it was before, <laughs> Throw them away, bring it right. That's how the, the situation is when a new manager steps in until he leaves. I don't believe that much in these kind of things that I try to change as less as possible because I know there is a life after me at Liverpool and um, all yeah. that stuff. So why should I only, without having a real idea what was wrong before, deciding it was all wrong and change everything makes no sense. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. But it was intense. It was really intense. And um, I, I invented 
the late, 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 late afternoon nap. So I came, uh, left house seven something in the morning, came home at seven, eight o'clock in the, uh, uh, at night and slept from eight to 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> just, I could, I just came, came in and uh, 30 minutes before I speak, good. Yeah, gone. Like this, pop. I went to bed again at 11. So that was really, that was really intensive. But it's cool. It's what I wanted. So of to course. learn, to learn the newest thing. Now it's all a bit more settled. Yeah, of course. Yeah. When you step into something new, obviously, yeah. it's overwhelming. There's a lot it of is. things going on. A it lot is. of information. A lot of things to take in. A lot of names to remember. Oh, yeah. Like, that must be the tough thing as well, being a manager sometimes. You've got to remember everyone's name. That's a tough thing for somebody who's on television. Like, if, I'm not sure if fame is the right word, but everybody knows you. It means everybody I meet says, Hi, Jürgen. Do you remember? And I, <laughs> not really. <laughs> the, best, the, be the, best, the best thing ever was we were on holiday somewhere with my missus. And then we stand in front of a, um, like a restaurant, outdoor restaurant, and somebody shouts my name. Yeah. And it's a natural thing that you turn around. And not my nickname even, so or a variation of my nickname. So I just turned around and he gets up and a very a person you would not say hello to if he's not shouting your name. Yeah. And and he's coming over and then, Do you remember me? And I very loud. So everybody in the restaurant was like turning and I was seeing so, so, uh, what? Not really. I said, We were checking in together in a hotel in Munich three years ago. Yeah. How um, much things have happened in your life between that and then? Yeah, and my missus was really spontaneous and said, have you been the one with the black suit case? Said, yes! Oh. oh. <laughs> Come on. So, so you just go along with it sometimes no, and be like, just, yeah, I remember, yeah, 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 I do yeah, remember, I remember you, big man. So that's, a, that's just a problem. I have no, of course, no idea. For him, it was a special moment, which yes. I appreciate, but I have, cannot. So that's that's the thing. I, that happens really often. That's a, um, I don't like that part of my life, that yeah. people, which I should know, more or less, I forgot. That's not cool. What was the thing that you liked about Liverpool the most? And like, just immediately? Stadium, atmosphere. Mm. So I didn't like the atmosphere in the beginning, but I knew what we can do with that. So I loved the stadium from the from the beginning and loved the atmosphere we have meanwhile. Mm. That's, a, that's a massive thing. That's the, the power of this, of Anfield is incredible. I have mm. to say that's something I and I work for Dortmund that's really really special and in Mainz I would say it's like the the little Dortmund when we were there like very ecstatic of what the emotional environment that was so then you come here and these special European nights I have no clue how the people are doing that but it's um it's pretty um really special and I, and I love that I'm a very ambitious person and sometimes I find that I can be super consumed by my work and things that I'm doing. And like, do you, does that happen with you? Do you ever feel like you're just like, how do I say, like, like cons just always <laughs> consumed with your work? Like, how do you switch off? Too focused or too single focused, whatever. What is that? What yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, it's, but not even just that, like it's, I think about it all of the time and I'm sure for you, do you ever have moments where you switch off? Holiday, it? summer, summer, break. Yeah. So I try always to prepare as much as we can uh, before the season finish for transfer stuff like this, but I really have that time. Meanwhile, when we have a day off, I get up in the morning and then I still work, but then I put the phone away and stuff like that. In the moment when the phones, when I, when I forget my smartphone somewhere, then I'm on holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'm yeah. on holiday. So, but that's I'm, I'm still working on it. But it's much better than uh, when I was young. So my my assistant Pep, um, mid thirties, he struggles much more with it. But it's normal. And this his age, I had no clue how to switch off. To be honest. So, but yeah. it will it will come. We have all this kind of self protecting, um, like, yeah, it will happen. You will protect yourself at one point because you cannot constantly be like this you yeah. have you have to switch over meanwhile that's what i, I really I, I said it a couple of days ago what are you doing when you're not working or when did i sleep and i like it it's just like coming home and have a like a late 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 afternoon nap 
It's, it's wonderful relaxing. I think when you can do that, you're not only tired, then you are relaxed enough to do it. If you yeah, cannot yeah, sleep, yeah. Then, so and these these other things. And it's 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 getting better. So you of are too, too young. You are too young to, to I, I get it. I understand it. You say I'm too young. A couple of grays in there, you know. I'm not going to lie That's to you. If good, you look closely, there's some grays in there. Could be, could be I'm maybe genetics. not as young as you think. I, huh? I, I didn't see gray hairs, actually. <laughs> yeah, but um, all good. Rabanelli had really young. Um, yeah. Gray hair, so that's yeah, it. yeah. There's like there's a lot of artists um, from my scene and culture that have super gray hairs at like twenty, nineteen, twenty, and yeah, I guess it is is, is genetics. Cool. Yeah, it's fine. That's, yeah. that's, that's how it goes sometimes. Yeah, it's not a problem. Do you do you, can you ever be like obsessed with winning? Obsessed. I like it, but being obsessed, not sure. So, the first thing I learned in life was you can try what you can tr give your best try everything and it's impossible you lose yeah so i accepted that early i love winning but getting obsessed with winning not again maybe people don't like to hear that now but how is it i'm christian i'm fine with other people winning as well yeah so i want to win if you are better especially i want to win desperately yeah um but if not and there's a good reason for it i can accept that I love your attitude, man. Seriously, you you have such a what we see on the TV, yeah, and how you are here is exactly the same in the sense that you have an aura of you that's quite relaxing and stuff, and like it's good, man. It says that says a lot about you. I can't lie. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank um, you I've got much. one thing I want to do with you uh, very of quickly. Course. Of course. Yeah. So I got some quick fire questions. Yeah. You just have to answer them very quickly. Okay. If I'm, There's not I, a lot of them. You, you should not ask them that quick, quickly because I'm not native. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so give me time to understand. All right, cool. All right, I will do. Okay. What was the last thing you watched? I want to answer quickly. I just forgot. The Witcher. Witcher? Witcher? What's Witcher. that? Witcher. Yes. Okay. You don't know what it is? I don't know. I think it's a so new it's fantasy someone series. Someone needs to bust me. It's like... Is it, it good? It's a new Netflix series, which is like Game of Thrones. Oh, really? Just more expensive. Has it got dragons and all of that in it? <laughs> more expensive than what? Has it got dragons and... Yeah, dragons. Yeah. Okay, all right. Other other strange things. Animals. That was good. Um, the last book you read? That's difficult because it's only since two days. You want a quick answer. You don't ask a complicated <laughs> question. So I, I hear audiobooks, but they're only, they're only German because I need um, glasses for reading. Yeah. And... I don't wear them really, so I hear audiobooks. Okay. The 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 last one is the Cathedral of, but you cannot. It's it's a historical book. It's a historical oh, yeah, book. Historical okay, book, yeah. fair. But nice. Um, last time you felt happy. In the moment, I'm happy being here. I thought it will be a bit um, boring, but it's not. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy about that. Uh, three more. Um, the last person you spoke to. You. Okay, of course, but uh, before I? me. The guys from okay. New Balance. Right. Sorry, I thought you was gonna give me like My, a nugget. Like I don't know, I had a quick phone call with Jose. I had, no, I can't give it. It's not the last one, but I have exchanged messages with Arigo Zaki. Oh, okay, All that's right. it. That's it's now cool. Eh? I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I like know, I know, really good people. Um, <laughs> uh, last time you was angry. So I remember good things much longer than bad things. Because Love the rest that. Of, yeah, but it's it's like this. I cannot. I couldn't tell you when I was because I have no idea. I will not. Why should I? Yeah. Hold myself back by remembering when I'm angry and why I'm angry. So no clue. Well, um, oh. Jürgen, thank you. I appreciate Welcome. it. Um, I really admire what you are doing for football in general. That means and, a lot and, from um, a United support. I know what well, I have to. Everything because sometimes you have to separate things. Sometimes you have to separate your emotions on because sometimes the emotions that i feel on these things are not real emotions really and i just let them go way i make them go crazy but then when i put that to the side i'm able to then look at things for what it actually is and i'm like oh i respect this guy or i respect this player or i like how this team is playing so that pushes all my okay, bias not like well, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not like this, in the Duffel Bad podcast, we're here um, in in Liverpool. Thank you, Jurgen. I appreciate you welcome. coming through. Nice welcome, nice to meet you. Yeah.